Hey, what's up guys? It's Apollo here. Hope you guys are doing well and welcome to the American Civil War. This is day three of Gettysburg and this is Pickett's Charge at Cemetery Ridge. And if you've been following me for a while, you're probably wondering why did it take so long to do day three of this mini battle series? Well, I did part one, I did part two, but once I got to part three, the game would just keep on crashing and crashing and crashing. Well, thankfully, Emperor of the Great Unknown, Savior of the Broken, was able to record this battle. He didn't crash, he was able to give me the battle replay. He actually sent me the battle replay a long time ago, but the reason I didn't record it was because the battle here is an hour in 30 minutes and I just wasn't in the mood to record a battle that long well the year is almost over it is almost 2017 and I we just got to finish it so here we are with a very long battle day three of Gettysburg one of the most important days of the war actually all the days were important who am I kidding uh, but yeah crazy day Pickett's charge a bloody day and it should be a very exciting battle replay now to be fair I haven't seen the entire replay but I've watched the first 10 minutes and it's mostly just a massive bombardment phase with all this artillery let me just show you the scale of this battle and then you'll truly understand why it crashed over and over and over now I did lower the graphics a little bit just for you know a little bit of a security blanket just to make sure the battle replay doesn't crash because that would be awful because all my hard work all that commentary will be lost it'll be corrupted so uh, yeah that's why I lowered the graphics a little bit uh, we can see the entire Union Army unfortunately we can only see parts of the Confederate forces we can see their artillery which they've got a lot of artillery and you can understand why this is a very long bombardment phase because all the units so far is just artillery look at that it's an endless amount of artillery trying to match the Union artillery trying to soften up the Union before they charge in those Virginia bo Virginian boys as they try to take out the Union defense. So I'm pretty excited about this one. Let's uh, let's look at the Union Army before uh, we move on here. So uh, we're just going to ever so briefly uh, look at them. Uh, their army is mostly consisting of regiments from Ohio, Pennsylvania, which makes sense. We're in Pennsylvania, uh, Vermont, and New York. That's really, I mean, those are the three main states here that are represented with the uh, the regiments here uh, they do have a lot of artillery as well let me just kind of fly over and just show you all of this union artillery all over the place look at that just endless endless amount of artillery it's just it's insane the scale of this mod and i don't know why i stopped playing this mod it was such a cool mod just the detail the atmosphere it really does feel like a standalone game, and then once the infantry gets in range and you hear the crackle of the guns, it's awesome. Now, like I said earlier, unfortunately, we cannot see the uh, regiments of the Confederates. They are just hidden back here. You can see the dust of them moving. There they go. We can hear them a little bit. Uh, but yeah, I think it's mostly Virginian regiments that are going to be leading the charge in this battle. Now, just to speed up the pace of this battle, we are going to skip through the bombardment phase. I will start it back up once they start to advance their infantry, and this battle really starts to go underway. So the Confederate forces have finally arrived. You can see the Confederate forces here. They're no longer shy, and they're ready to show the world of who they are. They're ready to attack the Union forces. They have moved up quite a bit. They're about halfway between, a little bit less than halfway between the Confederates and the Union. Uh, we cut through a massive bombardment phase i mean it just never ended it was insane there were some critical moments during the bombardment phase where a couple generals from the union have died uh, i think they lost two generals if you look back here you can see he does have a couple generals like hiding away just making sure they do not die because they are going to need that extra morale they're going to need that general support in the front lines and they cannot afford to lose any more generals uh now if you look at the balance of power Look at that. The Union is at a huge disadvantage. So we're going we're gonna to go ahead and talk a little strategy here as the infantry just gets a little bit closer and closer. And we got a lot of a lot of Virginian boys. We got some Mississippi boys ready to give the enemy the cold ski, uh, the cold 
steal. Oh my God, words are hard. Uh, but yeah, they're gonna, you know, they're gonna try to push back the mercenary horde from the north and protect their southern lands. Uh, but yeah, what was I? Oh, strategy. That's right. All right. So the Confederates, what they need to be doing here is using their artillery strictly to take out the Union artillery. I think the Confederates have more infantry, so they don't necessarily need support on taking out the infantry. They just got to take out this artillery because if they do not take them out, that canister shot is going to win the day. Just kind of like the uh, the real battle, the canister shot was just so effective and just gave it just destroyed the morale of the Confederate forces. Uh, but amazingly enough, the, the Confederates somehow do get to the, you know, the fencing and actually get to the front lines where they can charge bayonets. But, uh, yeah, that's what the Confederates need to be focusing on. And I don't think the Confederates are slowing down here. Actually, they are slowing down. <laughs> okay. All right, let's see if he, uh, if he pushes soon. I don't want to cut, like, all of this battle out. But, again, you haven't really missed anything. Uh, we do have regiments back here. We've got uh, the 28th Virginia... Yeah, 19th Virginia. Uh, oh, he's pushing some infantry this way. So we got the 24th Virginia, 7th, 1st, and 11th. So he's going to really push on the flanks, obviously. You can see he's got four units here. He's got most of his line infantry so far on this front. The Union forces are in position, but the Confederates are not quite ready to advance forward. So the Civil War, the American Civil War, I mean, this game has been so pumped for the War of Rights. If you haven't heard, heard of the War of Rights, it's kind of like Mountain Blade, but it's it's made just for the Civil War. So we're going to have really authentic looking soldiers on the battlefield. Huge, huge, like they recreated the battlefields of the Civil War and they made sure the uniforms are authentic. You got the correct officer uniforms. You get, you know, every rank, they're making sure they get complete. And I, you know, I'm just hoping I get an opportunity. I really want to create a Georgia Confederate regiment. Uh, regiment. Maybe I'll make one for for both sides, the Union and uh, Georgia. I just got to do a Georgia one because that's where I was born, or not born, but that's where I was raised. I'm just a, a Georgia boy at heart. So I'm excited about that. I would love to do like practices, you know, drills and just going into those events. The Knights of Apollo as the Confederate forces of Georgia Regiment going in. But it looks like the Confederate forces are now ready to advance. And they're, uh, they're going to be fighting for their homes here, guys. Fighting for their homes. Fighting for that lucky lady waiting at home. Yeah, it's going to be a little choppy. I mean, there's a lot of units on the battlefield. Again, I'm just praying that we get through this battle replay. Because if we don't, well, you won't be seeing this. But I've got a good feeling. i got a good feeling. All right, so I think the Union, uh, they've got a nice position here. The artillery shelling the uh, second brigade here, the 88th uh, Pennsylvania. They've got a, a bit of a hill slope here. They might actually advance forward once they're in range of the Confederate forces. You can just imagine the officers just being like, hold, hold man, not yet, not yet. We're gonna advance pretty soon. They did, they did take um, some buildings here, I think. Actually, no, I don't think there's anyone in here. They might wanna fall back into the buildings, but they got the nice artillery support here. The artillery has now fo uh, changed targets and is going for the Confederate forces that are pushing on this flank. This is awesome. I just, I love the scale of this. I mean, this is unreal. I, I really wish Total War was like this scale all the time. It wasn't super laggy. It was meant for this, you know? But uh, maybe in the future. Maybe in the future. Who knows? Oh, nice. Nice volley there. Oh, oh it looks like he's doing grape shot here. So he's just trying to pick apart this infantry. The infantry's got to move. I mean, they've committed, so they can't really sit back and just stand here or they're going to get chewed up. Oh, we do have some shots fired. Yes. Oh, we can't. Where's the crackle, man? Where's the gun crackle? That's horrible. It could be Napoleon glitching out. Uh, sometimes it does that. Just give it a second. It might correct itself here soon. Hopefully. Fingers, qua fin fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, but he's in range. He's got a North Carolina boy is in range. Very nice. Very nice. 11th. Uh, they're a pretty healthy regiment. They got a lot of troops in there. It's a pretty, pretty thick regiment. Uh, more more shots being fired on this front here. So the Union's got to get in range. The Union's are... Are they firing back? Yes, they are. They are firing back. Come on. What's going on with the effects here? This is this is tragic. Hang on. Let me check my settings. 
Okay, so my settings are correct. I mean, the effects are turned on. Again, this is just Napoleon being Napoleon. There's so many units on the battlefield. Uh, the sound glitches out. I do apologize about that, guys. Uh, but again, we're just going to try to get through day three, uh, regardless of the guns, uh, gun sound effect. Now, I do think it will correct itself maybe once uh, some of the troops start killing each other and there's less troops on the battlefield, uh, hopefully soon. Like, whenever you do these massive, like, four, v four versus four battles in Napoleon, like vanilla Napoleon, the sound glitches out like this. So maybe if I just zoom out a little bit. But yeah, there's a pretty intense gunfight on this front as the Union tries to hold a, hold against multiple regiments from the uh, the Confederate forces. Uh, he's also got his other flanking force here. He's not quite attacking just yet. I think he's just waiting for the perfect moment. He's still just you know softening up the Union defenses with his artillery. And that just that bloody bombardment phase is still underway on this flank. Now the good news is that we can hear the artillery. Just not quite the musket fire. So awesome. So awesome. All right, let's head back over to the other side. Hopefully, we can hear the crackle of the guns. Because it's what we live for. Oh, yeah, we got a nice line battle. Oh, come on. Crack, crack, crackle, crackle. Uh, I mean, that's the best we're going to get. That sucks. I want to hear the guns so bad. I ho oh, man, please correct. Hey, let me, what if I do slow motion and then I press play? Come on, please. Please. Now he, now I can't hear anything. I can just hear the artillery. I can kind of hear it. I don't know. Let's slow-mo. Let's actually pause it. Okay, no. The artillery, though, is trying to shell this position. Uh, the Confederate forces are moving in as quickly as possible. They realize they got to break down this defense before the artillery does a lot of damage to them. They can't lose too many troops here because it's going to be so important. Bayonets ready to try to take out this uh, this position. Let's now head back over to the other side. Let's see if the Confederates are advancing any infantry this side. Uh, does, again, he's just, he's just holding his ground here, not moving forward. Uh, does he have any infantry back here? No, mostly artillery. Uh, he does have artillery, or I'm sorry, infantry in reserve. So I think he's got a lot more hidden troops in the, in the back. Remember, this battle really just has just begun. Pew, pew, pew. Crackle, crackle. <laughs> That's so unfortunate. I mean, it's pretty intense. It would be even more intense if we could hear the guns, but I'll just stop talking about it because it's just, it's so tragic. It, it, don't worry, though. It, we will eventually hear them. I, I know I sound like a broken record, but here comes a flank. Look at this. The Union coming around, being aggressive. Uh, Emperor the Great Unknown pushing up his first brigade. He's got the, the uh, uh, 142nd Pennsylvania. He's got the 121st. The, let's see, the uh, 114th. So they're in range, they got some tall grass, but they know what general direction the enemy is located in. Uh, he is losing a lot of troops. Uh, the Confederates need to turn quickly. He does have a line of 11th uh, Mississippi boys trying to defend the flank. And they're doing the best they can. They're, they're taking out a lot of enemy forces. Let's see, he needs to push up more of the... Um more of these guys, the 114th. I mean, he just needs to keep pushing, get as many guns firing down on that position as quick as possible. Uh, let's see what's going on. He's going to continue push up here. He does have a slight little hill he's got to take care of, uh, but he should have some kind of an angle to the enemy. See, this is the 73rd Ohio. Ohioan, boys. <laughs> Whenever it's Civil War, you just refer to your troops as boys. All right, let's see how the, uh, the this phase over on this front is going. So it's still going. Lots of artillery firing. I, I'm just glad we can at least hear the artillery somewhat. Uh, there is a timer to this battle. And there's still an hour and four minutes left. So that kind of makes the Confederate forces have to advance forward and take out this defense. Obviously, you have to attack as the uh, Confederate, Confederate States of America. Yeah, but still nothing yet. Lots of artillery, lots of Confederate artillery shelling this position. Not sure if they're going for the infantry or they're just trying to take out the Union artillery, but the, you know, the infantry is just getting in the way. Let's head back over to this main front line where I'm just praying the guns are working. Oh, oh, I, I think I heard him for a second. I think I just got my hopes up. 
Oh, no, no, we can hear him. We can hear him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. This is so good. All right. So you hear that? Oh, this is going to be so epic, guys. So I apologize about that. It's not my fault. It's not the mod's fault. Fault. It is just Napole Napoleon Vanilla just super glitchy. As soon as I heard, I heard them reloading their guns, I was like, yes. Uh, it's not going to be perfect, but again, it's going to get better over time. Nice volley there from the 30, 37th... Uh, I was going to say New York, uh, North Carolina Regiment. Now we have the 47th Regiment. I love how familiar regiments fight together. So this is a very thick line. You should probably try to spread them out as as, as much as possible. Uh, let's see how the, the fight is going over here. The Union flank where the let's see Mississippi, the regiment from Mississippi is still holding on to this flank. They've got a very important job. Their main assault could completely fail. He's also got to watch out from artillery fire. I mean, one good cannonball could wreck out, the, wreck this entire regiment. So it just sounds so awesome, guys. I love it. I'm just so happy. I'm so relieved that we can now hear the guns. And now they're gone. <laughs> now we can't hear them. We can kind of hear them. It's a little glitchy. All right, let's let's go back to the Union point of view, where I think he needs to push up his men. Uh, the 90th Pennsylvania, they don't have any good, they don't have a good angle to the enemy forces. Now, not all of his forces have bad angles. I think some of them, oh, a lot of carnage going on on this front. He's got his first Delaware. Uh, yeah, I think the Union needs to push up because that or just hold his fire. Oh, this is pretty cool. I like the two different rows since the, uh, the elevation here gives them the ability to have two rows right behind each other. So this is the 125th New York supporting the... Let's see, what is this? The 71st Pennsylvania. And I think Kentetic, uh, con uh, not Kentucky, uh, Connecticut. Uh, the 14th Connecticut. I was gonna, I mixed Kentucky and Connecticut. Awesome. Classic me. I mean, look how cinematic this is. I mean, that is just the sun, the smoke. It's just, it's unreal. I would love a standalone Civil War, Total War. I mean, something with this scale, it would be amazing. Uh, but we do have some Confederate forces here starting to lose hope. They're starting to lose morale. Let's see how long they can hold. I mean, their morale is in orange, which is not terrible. But one good cannonball coming into their regiment could destroy their hopes and dreams. Oh, look at that. You can see the, the fire, the gun smoke in the back. That is awesome. Let me see that again. That was cool. Even though we can barely see... I mean, you can just see their heads over there. Alright, let's see how the Union flank is going. Uh, I mean, the the uh, regiment from Mississippi holding strong. Unfortunately, we... Oh, wait. No, we can see the number of troops. They're still at 239 strong. They, origin, they originally had 296. So they still have a lot of their, um, their regiment still intact. Uh, but they are taking on multiple smaller regiments from the Union. Uh, the 142nd PA. Oh, PA. Pennsylvania. <laughs> but this is a, a really good move by Emperor of the Great Unknown. And, I, well, this is not a good formation. What's going on here? Uh, he needs, sometimes this happens in the mod. Like, the troops have a mind of their own. And they just get into, into the worst formations possible. Uh, but he is correcting that. And he's going to try. I think he just got to keep pushing. Maybe if he can get troops. Oh, my God. Look at this. What is happening over here? Uh, the red line of Gettysburg. There's no more You're flanking around. Uh, but he should try to get even more infantry. The Confederates did a great job of maneuvering more infantry to protect that flank. But if the Union can just send these guys down the road and he could fire down to the backs or the flanks of uh, the Confederate line infantry... That would be so helpful. But just look at it. I love how they're using the railing as a defensive uh, position. These guys are just out in the open field. There they go. They're actually marching forward. They're actually charging forward. Look at this, guys. Blow your bayonets. Oh, just kidding. Get in line. Get ready to fire. Let's see. if we, Can we get a proper volley here? That would be awesome. It right, looks like they're most of them are re reloading at the same time. Oh man, that is so cool. I, that's probably my favorite part of the mod, just seeing the flash of guns in the background, the smoke coming up. How terrifying! I mean, just seeing that flash and then a second later seeing you know fellow comrades drop right next to you. 
It's gotta be a very, very terrifying time period. Very terrifying war. Obviously, this was the deadliest American war. Most American casualties than any other war that America was, uh, was in. So, it's a gruesome. I mean, this is the bloodiest battle in the American Civil War. Not, not the bloodiest single day battle, but the bloodiest battle overall. And of course, this was a multiple three day battle. And the bombardment phase on this front is still underway. Amazingly enough, the Confederate forces are just not quite ready yet. And I kind of like the strategy here of how he's focusing one side first. We do have more regiments coming to the aid of the regiments in the front line. We got the 13th Alabama and we have the 14th Tennessee. So they're going to try to move forward. I think they noticed that the Union is now maneuvering over some small regiments, really tiny regiments, depleted regiments, trying to aid the uh, the other Union boys who are trying to hold hold back the Confederate forces. We have the 19th of Maine. So the gun sound effects are getting a little bit better. There we go. We're really starting to hear them now. You know, the American Civil War just has this charm. And I'm not saying that just because I'm American. Um, I really enjoy a, a lot learning about a, a lot of different wars, especially Napoleonic time period. You know, countries that I've never been to, I wasn't born in, and I, I find them fascinating. And I get the same kind of feeling with the American Civil War. I don't know what... It's just the the culture almost of it all. Like the, the, the music, the, the Civil War songs, the uniforms just the tradition of it all it's just all really interesting and it's it's really cool to live in America and be able to visit the uh, you know certain battlefields like Gettysburg which I haven't visited yet but I, I when I used to live in Georgia I would they had this really cool uh, Civil War Museum where you could well, you know you could see the the actual uniforms and and you know it was, it was really awesome it was, it was pretty cool anyways moving on back to the back to day three of Gettysburg which is still underway and the timer down here they've got less than an hour and I f have a feeling that this is gonna go all the way towards the end of this timer all right sorry about that guys my game did crash there but we are back where we where we left off I was very fortunate to be able to save my corrupted footage and whenever it crashes I don't know why but the file becomes corrupted I can fix it sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't but I was able to fix the gameplay and audio uh, but uh, yeah thankfully we are able to save it and we are back now I had to fast forward through like 40 minutes of gameplay but the Confederates are still holding this fence line here they got two rows of, of regiments. I don't know if that's the smartest idea. Just as long as the second row does not fire. Oh, and artillery is now shelling this position, which is a great spot to shell because there's just so many of them in one spot. So Emperor of the Great Unknown, he pushed up some of his artillery and look at, they got the perfect angle to that Confederate position, that rebel position there. So the, uh, the US artillery, they are just having a field day. So look at this, look at this. Oh yeah, cannonball is going left and right as the Confederates desperately hold on to this fence line and try to take out the uh, the Union forces. There's a lot of crumbling going on, a lot of casualties on this front. Now if we look towards the center, there's a mighty fine battle line going on over here too. Long, long Confederate line trying to soften, soften up the center of the Union forces. We got a lot of uh, Mississippi uh, regiments here. I think Mississippi, North Carolina. We got more North Carolina. A lot of North Carolina. Amazing. All right. So yeah, the main center assault mostly North Carolina. North Carolina. More. Okay, words are hard to do. Oh my God. Uh, North Carolina regiments focusing focusing down the center. Uh, Jesus, that was that was terrible. Uh, but yeah, this is pretty cool center attack, a pretty nasty, devastating center attack. Uh, if we look on the Union side, they are thinning out pretty quickly. They do have a little bit of a ter terrain support and some fencing. Now, I don't know. I think I mentioned this before, but I'm not 100% sure if the fencing actually protects these soldiers from enemy fire. But we got the 70, uh, 72nd Pennsylvania, 2nd Brigade, 2nd Division, 2nd Corps, holding this center position. A lot of fallen, uh, a lot of fallen soldiers on the Union side as well. Uh, you can see this regiment 
Look at this. They started with 94. They're now down to 33. Make that 32 as another soldier falls to the ground. So it's a pretty rough defense here in the center. I think the Confederates should really try to focus their attention and try to take out that center line because I think that's a good bet. And just look at, look at, you can see they were fighting right here and then they advance forward. And that's just crazy. I mean, the casualties in this, in this battle is unreal. Uh, let's see what's going on on this front. So the Union... Actually, are they moving forward over here? They do have a solid line. Uh, they are protecting the right side as the Confederates are advancing. Lots of artil artillery fire shelling the advance of the Confederate forces, just like the real battle. Uh, we got the 38th Virginia moving forward. You can see just the dirt flying up from the uh, the shells of the artillery. Down here, we... Oh, we do have... Uh, let's see. No, he's... Yeah, he's pushing up his infantry on the very right flank from the Confederate point of view. So he's going to try to get behind the railing once again and soften up that Union defense. The only thing is that the Union is really spread out. I mean, they're all the way to the red line. So these Confederates, they're going to have a tough time. I mean, they really got to spread out their forces and try to, uh, you know, try to put down suppressing fire. Oh, my God. Did you see that artillery hit? That was nasty. All right. So they also, oh, my God, this is ridiculous. Another good hit on this regiment. This is the first Virginia. They just got rocked. They got rocked really hard. So they're getting back up. They're trying to get into position. The other regiment trying to support him, pushing on the flank. And again, he's using the fencing. There goes another general from the Union. So that is a tragic day. What is that? The third general? Fourth general? Something like that? Oh, yeah. He was behind the barn. Or in the barn, I should say. And he is now destroyed. Now dead. I, I assume artillery took him out, which really is how all the other um, generals have fallen today but the union now stands their ground all kinds of different thick layers of uh, uh, regiments which is the cool thing about this game i don't know if i mentioned this before because it crashed and i'm losing track of what i said before and and now but uh, the regiments they're in different sizes like it, they start off in different sizes some are healthier some are larger so when you spread them out like this a regiment might get too thin or it might get too thick so you gotta individually take care of your regiments uh, but th with a battle this large there's just so much going on at one time that it can get really tricky it can get tr uh, pretty challenging of um, you know trying to manage every single regiment but this center battle has been a very costly battle for both sides. The Confederates losing a lot of uh, a lot of infantry here. But you can tell you can tell they're really thinning out. Get some cool point of views here. Oh my god! Oh my god! They're disappearing! What's going on? That was crazy. Uh, let's look at the Union uh, point of view. Where? Oh, this is actually pretty cool. Look at this. Oh, this is too cool. This is too too cool for school. Look at this formation. He's got men in the in the road, and then he's got a, a back line up on the hill. And he doesn't have to worry about friendly fire here because obviously he's gonna have you know the terrain, the the different levels, elevation in the ground. So he easily fires over his own his own troops there. That is awesome. I love that formation. Excellent defense. As Emperor the Great Unknown leads the Union, doing a pretty good job defending against these rebels all right let's let's oh what's going on here we've got a, a great push from the union forces actually moving in on the confederates the confederates got a couple random regiments three units in reserve he's still trying to hold on this flank but the union's really focusing all of their firepower on the left uh, so they've got a lot of regiments and artillery supporting them as well. So this is not a good position for the, the Confederate forces. They need to retreat out of here. This is disaster, as the future president would say. And they need to fall back, regroup with their forces, and approach this a little bit differently. Because they're outnumbered, they're outgunned, and they're also outpositioned. So he's not going to win this one. It's not a fair trade. He needs to get out of here and save his forces. Or, uh, later down the later down the road. But uh, yeah, look at that. I mean, this is just a juicy target for artillery, and you can see the smoke from the artillery in the background there. Oh my God, how terrifying! But they they're not phased at all. They they just get back up. It's all right. A cannonball nearly hit them. They just they stand their ground. They stand their ground. 
Alright, so a nice flanky force. We're about halfway through the battle. There's 40 more minutes left to go. And Emperor is trying to be aggressive here, which is a nice change. Historically speaking, you know, the Union was pretty defensive. Oh, artillery, uh, rebel artillery coming in. Uh, but yeah, he's now going to push on this side. So I think he's trying to set up a trap here, guys. I think he's trying to surround these rebels and going to be able to cut them down from two different angles. He does need to take care of this force right here. Uh, they're already the 11th of Virginia. They're starting to break. Uh, the other regiments are still going strong, but for how long? How long are they going to hold on here? Uh, we've got, I mean, look at this. I mean, there's troops in the road. There's troops behind the walls. There's so many Union forces on this side. And he's got the first New York artillery battery gun. Artillery reserve. Uh, they're now firing down on the uh, rebel position. As this is a cool, cool little angle right here. The tree, the orchard, uh, orchard nearby is fantastic. Uh, there are some Union forces. Where is this? Where is this? This is the center fight. The very costly center fight for both armies. Such a cool battle scene right here. I love it. I mean, just this. This mod, just so, it does such an excellent job of recreating the Civil War. It's amazing. It is just truly amazing. I've I just, I love it. It is fantastic. I could watch this battle over and over. Maybe not over and over, but you know what I mean. I mean, the fact that it's an hour long, I really don't mind. Because it's just, I enjoy the cinematic shots, the musket fire, the smoke. It's just really cool. Yeah, but this, like I said, this is a very costly fight. Uh, we do have the, the uh, troops thinning on this side. The Union still holding on on this front right here. But the Confederates, they've got a decent number of troops behind the railing. Are they in range, though? I don't think they're in range of the Union forces up there. So they might have to push them forward. But again, over in this corner, he needs to get out of this position. This is not a good position. I think he had an opportunity to be able to actually push back the Union forces. Instead of holding this strange formation, I get it. He's trying to use the, uh, the fencing as a defensive position, but... I don't, like, this, look at this. Look at the amount of dead troops here. I don't think that was a good idea. I think if he pushed and basically did what the Union's doing right here, I think the Confederates, before they were, like, butchered in this corner, they had enough troops to break down the Union forces. So I think that was a missed opportunity. Also, I want to note that the Confederates are not using their artillery very aggressively. They need to push them up. Now, this is not, I don't think this... Is this horse artillery? I don't think so. So it might be a little slow getting to the front lines, but they have over an hour. He needs to get this artillery in the front lines, use canister shot, try to weaken the, uh, the uh, Union infantry before advancing. Now, what is going on here? This is interesting. Uh, so we got Rebels, the 7th New York, about to, like, they could have a conversation with the Union forces that are now advancing on this front. Again, there's so much going on during this battle that um, you can make silly mistakes like this. And, oh, my God, they just got obliterated. Uh, so he needs to quickly save these men. I don't think he realizes that they're they're marching to, towards their death. Where we have fresh regiments. We got the 14th of Tennessee Archer Brigade. Yeah, they're, they're firing down, peppering down the, the forces here. Yeah, he's got four fresh units in reserve. Uh, he's now pushing up more infantry this way. Uh, he needs to send up more support here. Now, I th yes, he did give up. Okay, good. He, As you can tell, the rebels have... They gave up. Either they gave up or they were slaughtered. By the looks of it, I think they gave up. I don't see that many dead soldiers. Now the Union is advancing. So this is not Pickett's charge. This is like the Union's charge. Where they're doing a counter charge. And they're trying... Oh, look at this. They're setting up the trap. They're trying to surround the Confederates. The Confederates are forming the best formation they can possible around the fencing. He's got the 56th Virginia. 56 Virginia taking on the 13 Vermont got some rocks in the way giving some protection to the uh, Union soldiers just a little bit so I think they got them on the run 
Oh, they're now getting even closer. Let's see, he's reforming. Oh, oh, what is this? What is this? More and more rebel forces come. Why is he using the railing like this? I mean, I, I, I sound like a broken record, but I feel like he should spread out his men more at, at this kind of angle. You know, if you can see my mouse, just like so they can face the rebel. Because what's going to happen here is that this regiment in this corner of the, of the, uh, the fencing, they're going to be shot at from three different line infantry. So they're outnumbered, and meanwhile, they have the men to support them, but these guys are not in range, or at least that one is, but this back, look, they're not in range. You gotta have as many guns firing down as the, on the enemy as possible. So the, the rebels are really missing an opportunity there, the CSA. And more retreating as the Union puts on a massive flank. Look at this, the V of death. Uh, surrounding the Confederate forces, and they are not going to last much longer. Let's now go back to the other side where this center position. Look at this, guys. Look at this. Union forces, I imagine that these units have already, you know, they broke early on. They've, they've now returned to the fight. They calmed down a little bit, but they're going to stay with the artillery. He can use canister shot. He can basically use this artillery as basically a line infantry, a deadly line infantry. So he's fallen back to the safety of his artillery. Uh, he still has a lot of line infantry here. He's still pushing on this front. And the rebel forces are still hanging on to this, this wooden fence here. Just not giving it up. He's got uh, the 38th uh, North Carolina and the 7th uh, Tennessee. And I can imagine when these players are playing this battle live, they were probably just non-stop micro just looking everywhere just trying to make sure they're winning on every front making sure that they're making the best decisions at all times and even when you do that in this kind of battle it's it's difficult it's really difficult because there's just so much there's so many units on the battlefield all right so the, the union continues to stay strong here they're still getting bombarded from uh, enemy artillery, but they will hold their ground, and they're breaking most of the rebel forces. Look at this. This is just a sad force. What this used to be is is nothing. Uh, now, let's see what's going on this, on this front. Um, the Union is now pushing forward. Look at this. Emperor the Great Unknown getting so aggressive, so confident. And the scary thing is that... You don't know. You don't know what they have up on this hill. They could have a lot more forces. They could... I mean, you could be pushing them back. But I feel like the Confederates, based on the balance of power, they've got more infantry. Yeah, look at this. They're now mar marching up the 28th Virginia Regiment. They're going to get revenge for their fallen brothers. So they're going to go to the front line. Uh, he needs to try to retreat. Oh, oh, look at this. Look at this. Out of nowhere, regiments. Coming from the tall grass, we got the 14th Virginia, the 18th Virginia. They're going to reform. Look, if they can maneuver. If, oh, look. All oh, tables have turned, guys. The tables have turned. So I think the Union, I don't know if this was on purpose or this was, uh, you know, just by accident. But they have set up a trap. And the Confederate forces now outnumber the Union forces. And the Union, remember, they're outnumbered. They're outgunned in this battle. They have to be defensive. Now Emperor the Great Unknown, he's out in the open being very aggressive. And he might have to fight for his life here. The Confederates need to form up quickly, though. Uh, they need to form a nice line to take on the Union. Uh, he is trying to move quickly, but he's got a couple columns here uh, overlapping, which is never a good sign. They need to fire back. Let's see. Oh, oh, geez. What is he doing? All right, that's a pretty good volley. He's got... Oh, nice. He's got troops over here. One good volley from these guys should break these Union forces. Nice. Nice volley. Excellent. Yep, sure enough. Sure enough, the, the 51st or 151st Pennsylvania, they are breaking and the flanks are crumbling for the Union. They still have this pretty healthy uh, regiment here as they continue to hold down, hold their ground and take on this reinforcement Confederate force. Uh, a lot of mistakes here from the Confederate forces. Don't double up your lines like this. The back line, unless he turned off fire at will, the back line will kill their own men that's standing in front of them. They're just too stupid like that. Uh, he does have a little bit of a high ground here, but the, no, not really. I mean, this is pretty much even ground, so he can easily shoot the backs of his men. 
Yeah, like right here. He's doing it right here, guys. Not a good sign. You'll see once they fire, you'll see blood splatter right in front of them. Friendly fire for sure. The unions, their morale is 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 probably pretty solid right now. Just seeing the Confederates slaughter each other. Oh, oh, he's retreating. He's giving up. He's like, okay, this is not a good situation. We are falling back. There's no way I can defeat all these Confederate forces. They have us outflanked. We must go back. And remember, these forces have been fighting for a long time, so they're pretty tired. So we'll, we'll head back over to the other side, the, the other part of the battle, where the Union... Oh, the Union's also falling back over here. Why is that? I think we got even more reason... Okay. So he, he sent up more uh, reinforcements on this side. So again, I don't know if this is like genius or just an accident i'll give him the benefit of the doubt and say it's genius where he just kind of let the union feel you know he, he let them feel comfortable they're like all right we're winning this battle we can keep pushing forward but then all of a sudden extra you know confederate forces come out of nowhere and they're able to outgun the union forces and the union just you know in the middle of the battlefield which is not a good situation oh we got more breaking troops from the union the confederates are pushing them back guys the tables have turned. Let's get a nice zoom in on this. Love it. Look at that. Just so cool. I mean, it looks cool, but it's not exactly cool. If you know what I mean. The Confederate forces stay on their ground. The reinforcements aiding the, the poor men who broke earlier on. A lot of Virginia boys here. A lot of Virginia boys from the tall grass. All right, so the Union has fallen back. He does have some artillery in the front line that could definitely help him out. He just switched the canister shot. Oh, this is pretty cool. I like the the cannon. Look at it's the barrels going through the fence. That's awesome. That is really awesome. They're going to fire. Let's see if he's using canister shot. I don't think so. I think he's using standard shot. They're a little too far away. It's going to be loud. Oh, no. He is using canister shot. But I don't really think he's getting that great of hits. It's, it's pretty crazy how this battle just picked up out of nowhere. And the fight over here has really died down. Uh, I mean, there was some reserves showing up for the Confederate forces. Look, more grape shot coming down, just trying to soften them up. That artillery just focusing down the Confederate infantry. And that's exactly what he wants to do. I mean, the Union doesn't need to focus down the, the enemy artillery. He should focus down the infantry because the infantry is the ones that's going to be charging forward trying to take out the, U the Union defenses. So, I mean, the time is against the Confederates. Because they're the ones that have to take out this... To, uh, you know this position they're the ones that they're they're gonna have to destroy the Union Army and the Union Army all they have to do is just survive just wait them out so I saw that uh, that canister shot into these uh, these uh, rebel forces we see we've got some some look at that mobilizing line infantry from the Union oh what is this so looks like the cannon crews uh, lost their cannons the horses are going wild Running through the, the smoke. Oh, it's all flying. Did you see that? Flying Rebel. Flying Reb. Johnny Reb. Flying through the air. Excellent. Awesome. Alright, so the Union took some buildings there, it appears. Alright, there's 30 minutes left in the battle. So the Confederates are starting to run out of time. Uh, oh, the Union should probably push forward here. There he goes. There he goes. Putting down some returning fire. So I like it. The Union's still being aggressive here. And I think he's just... Yep, yeah, there's that canister shot. But again, I don't think that canister shot's really getting anything. Oh, uh, this is like... This is so lifelike. It's amazing, this mod. I love it so much. I right, remember that the red forces are the Union, the blue forces are the Confederates. I know it's a little, it's a little bit backwards. More Union forces are running. 
You can see they're breaking from this, this fencing line. Oh man, that's a juicy regiment. They originally had 331 men in their regiment, now down to 282. They've got an uphill battle taking on these rebels. But they stand their ground for the Union. Alright, uh, Union forces now advancing forward. Uh, there is a center position still. Our Confederates still fighting on in the center. Just trying to soften up the Union. Let's see their targets here. Uh, not exactly the greatest shot. You can see a couple flags, you know, flapping in the breeze. You can see a couple faces up here. But overall, it's a lot of terrain in the way of these uh, line infantry forces. So they can't get the, the best target on en enemy forces. I love the crackle of those guns, man. It's just so awesome. Doesn't get old. Oh, oh, wait, wait. Hold the phone, guys. Yes, the, the artillery has broken. Look, you can see what's left of this artillery. Just slaughtered horses, broken wagons, leftover, you know, cannons, abandoned cannons. He still has this regiment or this, you know, artillery crew right here, uh, which should still support him. I think he should switch back to the standard shot. That canister shot's not really getting anything done. Oh, there's that Confederate. I mean, there's just so much artillery in this battle. It's amazing. Oh, look at this, guys. Uh, man, I really wish he would thin out his lines a little bit. But he does have a flank here. We've got the 143rd Pennsylvania Bucktails, 2nd Brigade, 3rd Division, 1st Corps. Uh, now, they've seen a lot of action. They originally had 135. They're now down to 75. Even though they're very depleted, they're still uh, making a lot of... A lot of progress in this battle by focusing down the flank of those rebel forces. All right, so yeah, look at this. The rebels are so thin now. I mean, they're so depleted. Down to 53. Originally had 129. This unit's down to 68. Originally had 248. They lost so many good men. It's very unfortunate for them. Very. I feel sorry for you, bro. This kind of panel over this this front line this is amazing look at that it is so awesome so it's a struggle a struggle for both armies a dead even fight but the union I feel like has made a couple better uh, decisions throughout the fight which is slightly giving them the edge uh, the, no, look at this now okay again the union the union is charging forward uh, is this Pickett's charge or is this Union's charge? This is awesome. Pennsylvania charge. All right, we got the 88th Pennsylvania. And what is this? The 142nd Pennsylvania, 1st Brigade, 3rd Division, 1st Corps. Here we go. And they're going to go for it, guys. But we got a lot. Oh, man. Look at this. The Confederates are waiting for them. They've got a lot of troops. They're going to try to do the same thing the Union did to them, where they have troops in the roadway, and they've got some troops on the high ground. The only thing about this defense here, look at this. They're mostly shooting in the dirt. Most of their shots are going into the ground because of the angle. Yeah, you can't see anyone. So he should just hold fire and wait for the enemy to get closer. Once he does get closer, I think he should just get either, you know, Retreat a little bit and then fire or stand his ground switch the bayonets and charge the Union But the good thing is even though yes, he's not killing a lot of the Union soldiers uh, the Union soldiers cannot kill them So he might he might have to get a little bit closer. I mean, I don't really see a clear shot for these guys This is awesome. I mean the cool thing about this battle is that there's just so much going on in so many different parts I mean, so many different flanks, so many different front lines. He's doing it again. He's clumping up his troops. Unless, like, in the mod, they got rid of it somehow. I don't really know. Let's see. Let's see if the 7th Virginia kills uh, the 57th Virginia. Like, you know, I don't really like the 57th Virginia. Let's kill them. Let's see. Here they go. I don't know. They're reloading. Let's see if they... You'll see blood splatter from the back. I mean, I haven't really seen it. So maybe there's not friendly fire. I don't know. It's tough to say. I'm just so used to Napoleon, like vanilla Napoleon, that that's always a thing. All right, a small regiment of bucktails moving up. Almost suicidal uh, march up there. I don't know if he's just causing a diversion or what. 
A lot of the Union forces are starting to wrap around this way. Uh, Confederate forces are waiting for them to wrap around too much. He's got uh, three regiments here ready to push down on those Union forces who are trying to creep their way around this flank. Uh, let's now see what's going on in this front. Oh, 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 we got a flank. Okay, so now the, the Confederates are pushing their center reserve uh, towards the left flank on their point of view. And they're going to try to surround the Union. The Union is trying to quickly get a, get ready for this. He even moved up his artillery. This is what I like about Emperor of the Great Unknown. He's very aggressive. He uses his artillery very aggressively. And this is what the Confederates should be doing. I mean, the, it's completely backwards. The, the Union should be playing like the Confederates. And the Confederates should be playing like the Union. So it's pretty cool how this battle has got a different twist, you know? But again, not really getting a lot of kills. The only uh, soldiers here that are getting kills are these troops. You can kind of see the tops of their heads. Not really. I, I, I really don't know how anyone's getting any kills. Unless the, the bullet is like going down, you know, behind the hill. But you never know. It's possible. Uh, but really, this flank right here is going to be huge. And oh my god. Okay, so... The Union was well prepared for this. Look at that long line of blue blue soldiers there. Uh, this is not enough. This is not enough to break through that. Let's zoom out get a bird's eye view just so we have a better understanding of what's going on here. Well, it's actually... Hold on, hold on, guys. We do have a center push here of some fresh units. The 14th... Uh, Tennessee we've got the 13 Alabama 22nd North Carolina and the first Tennessee they are pushing towards the center this is actually pretty good I mean he's got the Union surrounded on multiple fronts so the Union might have to fall back oh yes yes indeed look at this they are starting to break uh, the 12th New, New Jersey breaking uh, oh, I love the flash of the guns man that is just so awesome I don't know how long the Union's going to hold. They're actually breaking. Look at that. They're crumbling because they are surrounded. Unfortunate. Very unfortunate. Now the Confederates can push back the Union. This was a very aggressive play by Emperor the Great Unknown, but it might bite them in the butt later on in this fight because, remember, the Confederates have more infantry, and he, he can't really afford to be too aggressive here. And, uh, well, the Union's still flanking here. You would think the Confederates would send something for this flank. He still has the 149 PA Bucktails. We're down to 47 now. So they are focusing down the 57th Virginia, who are just totally okay with it. They're just like, oh, they're flanking around. That's okay. We're going to focus our fire straight ahead. Aim small, miss small. That's what I always say. Alright, there he goes. Is he breaking or... Oh, no, he's just breaking. He's just done. So the Confederates are now falling back. Falling back from the Union. Amazing. I mean, I'm pretty sure the Confederates have more artillery. They have more infantry. But yet, Emperor of the Great Unknown is pushing back the Confederates. Will this turn around? I mean, do the Confederates have any hidden units anywhere? We'll find out. We'll find out. Soon enough. We'll find out right after this short commercial break. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Uh, but this is a pretty close fight here. I'm actually surprised that they're still in this. Oh, that's that's a ch that's a game changer. We got uh, some artillery from Rhode Island. First Rhode Island artillery, uh, uh, battery B, second corps. They are just look at the two men breaking here. They are gonna get slaughtered. Look at this. Let's wait. Oh, let's wait for the canister. Oh man, how terrifying! How absolutely terrifying this war would be. I mean, this is the deadliest American war. It's crazy. Oh, there's another canister shot. Oh! There it is. There it is. That's going to cause them to break. There's no way they're going to continue to march through that. But they do. Oh, there they go. <laughs> okay, there they go. All right, here comes the second row. I mean, I just love canister shot. I, I enjoy watching it. It's just so devastating. It's so, like... It's so satisfying, you know, especially when you're you're the player. Oh, here we go. Here we go. They're going to fire again. This is the last regiment. Are they going to make it through? Another dead Union general. Wow. That uh, Confederate artillery is doing a lot of damage to those generals. Really sniping them out. Are you going to fire artillery? What? Come on. Come on. You got the 47th. There they go. Oh, oh, did you see the grape shot? 
You we can see it on the screen. And they're now running, but it's for nothing as they break. And then look at this over here. The Union forces are going to fire those rebels right at their backs and make sure they do not return. That is cold. I don't know. Like, if I was a soldier, I don't think I would fire at the retreating unit. I, I just couldn't do it. I, I mean, there's a lot of... Uh, there's a lot of science behind, um, they're not, I shouldn't say science, but psychology behind these, like, line battles. It's really interesting that, uh, people tend to miss more when they're actually fighting. Like, they, I, I forgot the video, uh, I, for, I don't, I don't remember who was mentioning this. I really forgot, like, what channel, uh, but soldiers in a, in a line battle situation like this, whenever they're fighting other humans, the accuracy goes way down because... People genuinely don't want to kill each other. I think they just want to scare each other. They don't. They don't want to end other people's lives. But um, yeah. Anyways, I'll just ramble on about some stupid. But uh, yeah, we're back. We're back into the battle, where the Confederates are wasting all their ammo, and the Union's just sitting there laughing. They're just like, all right, just waste all your ammo. That's fine. Uh, now the Union has reclaimed the center. Amazingly enough, how did they do it? I don't know. I don't know. Doctors hate them. How'd they do it? Okay, so. He's got the four. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, he's got some hidden units here out of the woodwork. Coming out of nowhere. Firing through the, I assume, apple oak, uh, orchard or maybe peach orchard or something like that. A pear orchard. <laughs> Whatever. An orchard. Uh, they're firing through and the Union forces are all out of position. Emperor the Great Unknown is trying to reform as quickly as possible. But hold that note. We haven't really looked at what's going on over here. Where... Uh, it's okay. It's just super defensive. The the Confederates are just shelling the enemy with their artillery. They're holding the fencing, and obviously the Union's not going to advance. They're also holding the fencing down here. All right, let's head back. Let's head back to the main fight, uh, where we can see that a lot. Look at this out of nowhere. Once again, man, these rebels are like ninjas. I swear, coming out of nowhere, they're firing down at the Union forces that are now kind of surrounded. He is flanking with a small um, small regiment of 29 men. Actually, two regiments here, 71 and 29 men, trying to fire at the flank. This is good. He's finally breaking through this Confederate defense where the Confederates are uh, they're, they're getting surrounded here. If he wants to hold this location, he needs to push up more line infantry, which he has a fresh unit of line infantry. They haven't lost a single man, and they just went ninja on me. They just disappeared into the vegetation. 14th Tennessee Archer Brigade. They are focusing down the center. The the Union's trying to take shelter in the in the tree line and of course this destroyed building here. It's been a very deadly battle. Very costly battle. What an epic fight. All right, let's zoom out. Sometimes, I mean, this battle's so big, we gotta, we gotta watch it from bird's eye view every once in a while. Oh, okay, so the rebels are starting to crumble here on this front. He needs to get this infantry over there. He, he needs to stop walking. They gotta start running, man. They've gotta stay in position. They gotta run and support this. Cause look, they're getting outflanked. This, this regiment's gonna break. The 14th Tennessee, they're gonna break pretty quickly. And the Union's got him outmatched. I mean, he's outpositioned here. All right, the artillery's still all back here, shelling as much as possible. Nothing going on in that front, so we'll head back over here once again, where most of the action has taken place. He's repositioned some line infantry to try to support that flank. Watch out for the friendly fire. Oh, the Union's starting to break. Look at that. Okay, so we got the, the 73rd Ohio breaking. And finally, he's got this line infantry in position. Now they're running. Uh, I think that's he's running because he's in range of the Union. All right, come on, fire. I know you guys got your muskets loaded, your rifles loaded here. Fire. There we go. Excellent volley. And those volleys are so devastating. It leaves so many dead right there. Oh, and the artillery is also shelling this position. Look at that. You can see the blood splatter there hitting some of the soldiers, but they keep running on insane. Very, very tough Union soldiers. But to be fair, the rebel forces were pretty tough as well, if not more tough. So there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of disagreements on who, you know, who are the better fighters. I think a lot 
a lot of people admire the the Confederate generals. They had really good generals. And they had pretty solid infantry. I mean, they had some really good fighters. But the the North, they may not have the best generals, but they had the industry and they had the manpower. So they could keep losing battles with like losing tons of casualties or, or getting, you know, taking tons of casualties, not losing casualties. And just being able to re, you know, reform another army just because they had so many, so many, uh, you know, population. And of course, you had a lot of Irish immigrants uh, coming over and fighting for the United States. Now they're retreating. And there's actually a really cool Civil War song about the um, the Irish immigrants coming over just to fight and to save the uh, the stars, uh, you know, to try to save the country from it breaking up. And they mentioned that uh, when. Uh, Ireland was going through some some troubling times. The U.S. sent over food and doctors uh, to, to help them out, and they always remembered that. And that was that was always something special to me, that the Irish the Irish would come over and uh, you know help the United States because they helped them in the past. And uh, yeah, I don't know. As as I am, uh, my ancestry is from Ireland, so that's pretty cool, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just rambling on again. Okay, so let's bird let's bird's eye view it again. <laughs> uh, the yeah, they're really thinning out over here. The the uh, Confederate forces, the Union, still holding on strong, but this is a, a growing problem for the Union. And the, yep, they are flanking around. We've got some 22nd North Carolina and the first Tennessee. They've got a pretty good angle here. This is pretty solid. They're gonna chip away at these Union forces, and sure enough, they are already breaking. Look at that. They cannot handle so many Confederate forces, so they're now gonna fall back. Uh, this unit is just near to breaking. He could break it any sec. Yep, there they go. There they go. Just was too late. He didn't fall back soon enough. And the Confederates have reclaimed this section of the battlefield. I mean, this is so back and forth as the two armies, the great powers, uh, do battle here. It's it's pretty, pretty nerdy that I said it that way. <laughs> Still nothing here. Just bombardment. Haven't missed a single thing. Not a single thing. All right, the Union's now falling back. I think Emperor the Great Unknown, he realizes that he just doesn't have the manpower. He doesn't have enough troops to take on all those rebel forces. Now remember, he's supposed to be defending, not attacking. So this is not necessarily a bad thing that he's falling back. He's just gonna let his troops rest up a little bit. Uh, he is staying right here, so he's not completely falling back. His troops are active. Most of them are fresh. So he could send them back in if he wanted, but that would be a gutsy call. I'm just waiting for the rebels to get ready their bayonets and to, to you know, just charge in like a true rebel force. Like Pickett's Charge, man. Just recreate the battle. That'd be epic. That'd be awesome. Uh, let's see. The Confederate forces are now holding their ground on this side. They're not going to advance forward. They're being very, very passive in a battle where they should be the one being aggressive. Uh, the U.S. have now abandoned the uh, the fencing here. Now, they're now falling back to this hill, and they're gonna try to hold the hill. Again, why advance forward? I mean, there's no need. You just need to fall back, take care of business, do what you need to do. Oh, wait, wait, hold the phone, guys. The, U uh, the Union forces, I was gonna say UN. Oh, geez, all right, good hit there. A good hit from the Confederate artillery. But yeah, the Union forces are, are going to hold their ground. They're going to hold their ground. You can see some rebel forces up here. If you look, yeah, see, you can barely see them. I'm not sure they're in range. Oh, here we go, guys. They're now moving back forward. Crazy. Emperor of the Great Unknown, he's insane. He's sending his troops to their deaths. Or he's doing an epic bayonet charge. I don't know. We'll find out. Let's see here. The ni we got the 90th PA. We have uh, the 108th NY. More Pennsylvania boys, the 11th New York. I think he's just going back up for another line battle. Try to, let's see, there's only 10 minutes left in the fight, guys. I mean, the rebels need to come back and they need to take this one. They've got to destroy all of the Union forces to be victorious. The time is against them. All right, so they're right behind the hill. They are firing at the forces. They've got their volley out. 
Oh, they're continuing to charge. Oh, guys, we might get we might get an epic bayonet charge. If we hear screaming, that's usually a good sign. Like the men yelling, not really screaming. All right, they're getting closer. Let's see. I think he's just trying to get up on the hill, try to fire back. No, no, he is doing a bayonet charge. He's charging in, and he's not setting up. And the, the look at this, a mass route. They are already breaking. This deserves some epic music right here. Let's let's hear it right here. Some glory, glory. This is fantastic. Uh, we do have some units standing the ground, and they break instantly as the Union charges in with their bayonets. Excellent. Now they're retreating, falling back. Oh my God, what a what an epic sight of seeing the Union go in with bayonets. That was awesome. And now they're going to continue to break the Confederate forces, and that might be the nail in the coffin. I mean, I really don't know. It depends how many hidden units. I mean, the Confederates are like ninjas in this battlefield. Look at that. Look at that. Out of nowhere, he's got two regiments. They're invisible. So will he continue to uh, charge in, or will he just hold his ground and, you know, continue another line battle? That was amazing. I guess he just knew, like... He knew that the Confederate forces were very exhausted, they were very depleted, and his troops were pretty fresh. I mean, his troops are pretty depleted as well, but he was able to just push through and, and instant break them. That was amazing. All right, so there's a bit of a line battle here. It's the brave Union soldiers who shattered the, uh, like a division, uh, not quite a division, but whatever, a, a large amount of uh, rebel forces now is going to continue on. They, they, you know, shot some pop shots. And I think they're going to go for another charge here, guys. I don't know. Let's see. Oh, he's going for the charge. And the Rebels, look at They're getting scared. Their morale is going down. It's like, is that, is that the Yankee horde, the, the mercenary horde trying to take our southern lands? Here they come. Here they come. Oh, we got blood splattering over here. We have Union forces already breaking. They're losing a lot of troops. The Confederates need to quickly get a shot off. Will they be able to do it? No, they set up their bayonets. They're going to hold their ground. And a massive Union swarm. This deserves more epic battle or epic music. Will it be enough, though? He's really clumped them up here. Oh, the troops in the back are breaking. They're like, oh, hell no. I'm not fighting that. I'm getting out of here. This is ridiculous. And then, oh, we got a cav. We got uh, probably the generals that lost their generals. Or the general's bodyguard, they're, they're charging in. All right, excellent, excellent. Really cool fight. The Union is, oh, they're just barely hanging on. They break that Confederate line. And I think they've had enough. They're now charging forward to more... Rebel forces. He's got two two regiments here. I don't think it's going to be enough. Oh, the artillery's coming down. That's not going to help the morale. Here comes that charge. They are just they are just so they are so bloodthirsty. 150th Pennsylvania Bucktails, Second Brigade, Third Division, First Corps. Remember their name as they charge in. We will make a statue of this great charge. That is for sure. First Tennessee now holding on for dear life. Their morale is green. They might be able to hold against this Union charge. But what a great charge indeed. Well, actually, they're still fighting. Union's not... Oh, there they go. So, I honestly, I think the reason he charged in is because he realized there's only six minutes left in the battle. So he might as well just charge in for the, you know, the cool epic scene there. That was amazing. Uh, seeing it actually break an entire, like, the rebel forces all right here were just like, nah, we're done. We're out of here. So what's left of this fight is this location right here. Where, again, the Union is moving forward. And I think this is a victory march. <laughs> I think this is just like, all right, game over. I mean, the Confederates, you were way too passive. There's only five minutes left. So we're going to push forward and take out your, your troops. Even if we lose all of our infantry, it doesn't matter. Because you can't take out all the ar artillery in time. But wouldn't it suck if he lost all of his infantry and the artillery just like insta-breaks? And he ends up losing the battle and the Confederates win? That would be tragic. I hope to God that doesn't happen. Because... Uh, honestly, the Union has outplayed the Confederates in this battle. I think he made much better decisions. He microed a little bit better. And it paid off. It paid off. Alright. There they go. They're getting in position here. 
Oh yeah, lots of artillery coming in. It's now down to five minutes as they engage what's left of the Confederate forces. The final stand of the Confederates. So yeah, I should have called this Union Charge. <laughs> Not Pickett's Charge. Okay, it's nice. He's spreading out his lines. So that's what you got to do with these regiments since they're all uneven numbers. He's got a whole another regiment back here. This is the 16th Vermont. And really what's left of the Confederates is just artillery. And that's why the balance of power is so uneven. Because artillery ha holds a lot of weight in terms of uh, balance of power. If you have lots of artillery, you usually are looking better in Napoleon Total War. But uh, again, the time is against them. Four minutes left. Uh, he is breaking some of these rebels here. We've got the uh, third Virginia breaking on the battlefield. Eighth Virginia still holding their ground. Uh, they should, you know, the Confederates should just charge in, you know, like do it for Dixieland. Just charge in and try to destroy the rank the Yankee scum. The Yankee scum. There they come. These nice blue uniforms. Look at that charge of fire. I love the dirt just splashing in their faces. It's awesome. As the cannons just, you know, the cannonball lands right in front of them. Now they're going to get their last couple shots. We're down to three minutes. And he's got another row here. The Confederates, they have actually got quite a bit of line infantry left. Yeah, so let's, you know what, while this last little battle's going down, and it's pretty obvious that this is going to be a Union victory, just like the real battle, and that will, you know, conclude the Gettysburg, Gettysburg miniseries, let's talk about what the Confederates could have done better. Now, first off, uh, I don't know who the player is. Uh, unfortunately, we don't see his name, but if you somehow recall that, oh, this is the battle I fought a long time ago, well, I think one thing he did wrong was that he was way too passive, he had tons and tons of artillery, which he could have used in the front line, but instead the artillery had been sitting in the same place for the entire battle. So he missed out on an opportunity like that. He, I don't think he microed as well as the, U, uh, I was going to say UN again, as the Union. And I think he should have got his bayonets in there, you know? I think he should have got his bayonets bloodied. But, it, you know, it's easier to be a backseat gamer. It's really intense, especially a big battle like this where it's super laggy. There's thousands and thousands of troops. And what we're going to do now is just fast forward to the very end. I hope you guys enjoyed this fight. It was really entertaining. There's two minutes left. Again, this is going to lead to nothing. The The Union forces might break here, though. <laughs> they're, they're pretty thin. This, this is the healthiest regiment what's left of the Union Army. The 16th Vermont with 242 men. This is probably a reserve unit. Yeah, more troops breaking. Oh, is he falling back? No, he's repositioning because we have a flanking force of Confederate forces. 38 Virginia, and we've got the 16th North Carolina. But he's reforming. Just, just buying, he's just wasting the time. We got a minute and 22 seconds left, so we'll continue to fast forward. And uh, hopefully this gives you a good view of the mod. It's a fantastic mod. I highly recommend you play it. I don't think there's a campaign, but they made a campaign for Empire Total War. I, I did a Let's Play of it a long time ago, but I got rid of it because I just hated it. I just not, I did not like my commentary. But, um, yeah, we are back. Or what, what, what am I saying? We are back? What? Uh, anyways, what, what is going on? Okay, so yeah, definitely try out the mod is what I was saying. It's a really cool mod, really fun. And there we go. There's the end where look at the amount of troops deployed. That is insane. That is so many men for this game. Uh, now, the kills are pretty much even. Actually, the Confederates killed more. They had a bigger army. They killed more. And the Union lost more, obviously. Uh, if we look at the stats for the Union forces, uh, here is all the stats. Look at all those troops. Crazy. Crazy. The best unit was the 11th New York, 3rd Brigade, 3rd Division, 2nd Corps. So, thank you once again, Emperor of the Great Unknown, for saving this mini-series and sending in your battle replay. This was an excellent fight. Uh, now, unfortunately, it did, not, it did not play out like the historical battle. The ending was the same result, kind of, uh, the Union winning. And... 
this was like the turning point of the war and every ever since after this battle it was just downhill for the south but uh, yeah great fight i hope you guys enjoyed it if you did enjoy it be sure to leave a like a comment share and subscribe if you haven't uh, already and thank you guys so much and i will see you next time